What's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to share with you how to sell your Amazon FBA business. Now, it's good whether you're planning to sell because I'm going to share some of the tips that I went through when I sold my business. I sold it a few weeks ago after a year and a half of really hard work preparing the business for sale and going through a lot of struggles. I finally uh, sold it and I'm planning to build more businesses that I'm going to sell in the future. So you can tap into my experience and what I went through uh, as, as, as really important things that you should be aware of. And again, it's not just for people that are planning to sell. It's also good for, uh, you know, if you don't have it in mind, if you build your business like you're planning to sell it, then your business will be much more healthier with all the you know best practices that needs to be implemented if you plan to sell. Uh, I, I think two weeks ago I had a YouTube live where I answered questions on answers um, uh, from uh, from subscribers. I answered them on a live, and uh, I'm sure you could benefit from watching this video if you didn't. So we're going to put a link down below in the description. If you didn't or you watch it or missed it, you can definitely watch it. Okay, so like I said, uh, it might be a long video and I wouldn't be able to cover it, you know, in like 20, 30 minutes, uh, uh, the whole topic. So I might break it down into parts. So this is going to be uh, part one. So without further ado, let's uh, go straight for it. What is the first step that you need to do? The first step that you need to do is uh, talk to brokers and I'm going to explain why. But you have a couple of options on how you can sell your business. You can list it on marketplaces like, uh, you know, Flippa or Empire Flippers. Those are the, the biggest marketplaces to uh, sell online assets. You can also send it directly to one of the aggregators or to a private buyer. But the third and most recommended option, in my opinion, after really, you know, debating between doing it myself or doing it with a broker, uh, it's the it's the last option, which is a broker, and uh, you know I will I will share with you why it's really important to do it directly with a broker and not through marketplace or directly. If you guys enjoy the content that I'm working very hard to provide and produce for you for free, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment with any feedback or questions do you have because I personally reply to every comment, and I will also appreciate your support by checking the links and the sponsors in the description below. That's the only way that we keep this channel alive. Because when you do things directly, um, there are so many things that you are not aware of, that you didn't really know that exist, that a broker that went through so many deals knows all, all of them already and can protect you. So just for the protection, leave aside the pool of buyers that they have and they nurture that could help you sell your business much quicker than you do it yourself. That's the secondary thing. For me, the most important thing is that they protected me. They know what to look at. They know how to get you a higher multiple. But the first thing that you need to do is talk to a broker before you even know whether you're going to use them or not and why. Because first of all, it will help you understand where you are, what, it, what position in your, your, your business is uh, to sell. It might be too early or it might be too late or you might need to be adjustments. Brokers know how to look in numbers and, look how, and, and how to look at your business to tell you whether it's the right timing or not and also where you're standing as far as selling to maximize the uh, selling price. Um, it will save you a ton of time with research. Instead of really doing all these things, understand how they work and figure them out by yourself. When you deal with a broker, they know those things already. So they, they cut this time off. Um, and the third thing is that they are going to give you some estimates. You know, when I before I started to sell, I thought my business would worth X amount. But after talking to a broker, uh, one or two of them, I realized that it's not the case. So, you know, don't be, you know, uh, it, it's a good way to know where you're standing as far as like uh, your business evaluation. So those three things are the first thing that you need to do when you are thinking of selling or even if not, uh, just talk to a broker, see where you are. They're going, they are going to give you some free recommendations. They want your business. So, you know, um, they, they usually will do it for free. Um, and it's their interest because if they do a good impression on you, they are going to... Um, 
obviously have your business when you're actually thinking of going to market. So uh, after you decided on which broker you choose, usually there will be an agreement, an exclusive agreement that they are the only one that can represent you with the amounts and percentages that they take. I can tell you that the good brokers takes around 10%, 8% depends on the selling price, which is a lot. But in my opinion, again, I think it's definitely worth it. The amount of time, the amount of protection and the, 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 the room for mistakes that you have when you do, do it yourself compared to a broker worth these fees 100%. And the opportunities that they can find you compared to you do it dealing directly with uh, aggregators or with buyers is again, uh, you know, you, you just can't compare it. So it's definitely worth it. It's a lot of money that they make, but you know, uh, I'm happy, you know, as long as I'm happy, I don't care what other people made. Uh, you know, I don't look about how much money they made as long as I, you know, get the number that I wanted. Okay, so um, I, I'm going to show with you now a list of things that I wish I knew that will get me a higher multiple. Some of them I knew, some of them I didn't, but you can get into my experience after selling and really learn those things, make sure that you implement them because it will increase your selling price and the multiples that you get. Now, for those of you that don't know what our multiples are, usually deals for online assets, which is which could be like Amazon FBA businesses, it could be websites, blogs, uh, Facebook groups, whatever, they run by multiples. Means that, let's say your re yearly revenue is $10,000 and the multiple of the deal that you uh, agreed on is three, you're going to get $30,000 uh, uh, for the deal because it's 3x multiple by the uh, total profit. It's not, again, it's not revenue. It's the profit that you made. Um, and there, there are other terms like SDE, um, you know, EBITDA. Those are things that uh, allow uh, sellers and buyers to know what is the exact profit that this business has to evaluate it better. And usually the multiple go by the SDE. Uh, which which is uh, seller destruction earnings, I think that's the abbreviation for that. Basically, it means that it's uh, all the profit that you made minus the personal expenses that are not related to business, like the owner expenses. So if you invested in a course that cost ten thousand dollars, it will be added to the SDE. So let's say the net profit, you know, accounting wise, taxes wise, hundred thousand, but. You know, for tax purposes, you deducted this ten thousand because it's an expense. But from a point of view of buying or selling your business, this is not a real expense. This is an expense that helped you grow as as the owner, but it's not necessarily help the business. So this ten thousand dollars are going to be added to the net profit. So it's hundred and ten thousand instead of hundred. So when you multiple three x, for example, instead of getting three hundred thousand, you are going to get three hundred and thirty thousand. So every dollar here that you add means that if the multiple it's three or four in my case it was 4.2 multiple and another one uh, uh add back but airing out means that a, a year after if there are certain uh you know conditions apply then i get more um but let's say it's four multiple four so it means that every dollar that you add to the sd that you can take and explain that it's not a, real, a direct expense that help you operate the business or uh, you know market it then it means four dollars more in the selling price so you know one thousand dollars more it's four thousand dollars more so this is very crucial that you deal with broker that they know how to look what to add it to the sd and play the, with those numbers but let's try to uh touch base and see what are the list of things that could help you get higher multiples so the first point that i wrote is that all products are around the same niche in my business it wasn't the case but it's easier to market your business to buyers when you sell the same uh, kind of uh, products in the same category or niche i had mixed categories and that kind of uh, you know scared some some of the buyers um you know some of the buyers not but you know you have a higher chance to get a higher multiple if your products are in the same category why because it's easier to market it's easier to deal with operations logistics easier to add more variations easier to manage and easier to grow easier to handle and that's what aggregators are looking for because they have so many brands adding them uh, you know, few categories, it's like adding another business. So that's a, a very important point. Number two, the trend is going up 
and you constantly improving your total revenue year by year. So, you know, when you sell a business, it's very, very important that the trend is up. If the trend is like that and down and up and down or up and down, you're in a very bad position. That's a very important point. You can't sell your business when your uh, numbers go down. It always has to be when they are up. The trend must be positive and increasing and growing. Uh, number three, no logistics issues and easy to handle items. So, you know, if big part of your business, uh, you know, uh, of your operation have so many logistics issues that could scare, uh, you know, buyers. Uh, they, they got hit last year by the COVID and by all the logistics issues. And they particularly put a lot of emphasis on checking and making sure that you don't have logistics issues. Your items are not too big. Your HS codes are not that complicated or you use everything like, like you have to. So, um, you know, easier to handle items, operations and how logistics works in your business. It's super, super important. The easier it is, the easier it uh, would be to sell it. Number four, good relationships with suppliers and payment terms. So, you know, aggregators have limited, with all the money that they have, they still want to be lean and manage their cash flow, uh, you know, in a nice way. Because sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of times, they, the money that they have, they have to pay for it interest. So it's better for them to use uh, payment terms with suppliers uh, instead of using their own cash obviously so uh you know if you have payment terms if you have good relationships with supplier it's a big plus number five customers base outside amazon a ratio above 20 percent uh, of external sales is amazing so you know most amazon fba businesses that are being sold are usually selling only on amazon fba or all the other marketplaces like in my example were only like five percent compared to amazon so 95 percent of the sales came from amazon and five percent came from outside marketplaces like ebay etsy walmart all of these together shopify all of these together were only five percent the higher these per the percentages the better why because you diverse your channels you're not dependent only on Amazon. So if they have a, a business that has 50% sales on Amazon and 50% sales on retail, that's a big plus. That could help you get a much higher multiple because you're not only dependent on Amazon. And that's something that is very, very important and healthy in every business. Number six, six uh, growth potential. So, you know, did you get out of stock? Could you show that, you know, with the right resources to the buyer, they can grow your business and take it to the next level? Or you kind of maxed out everything that you could do and there is not a lot of growth opportunity. And that could be signs like if you went a lot of times out of stock for a buyer, that's a really good point because they can say, as long as we're just being in stock, having enough stock, having enough cash flow to, you know, make sure that we have enough inventory, that's just by itself will grow our revenue by like 2x, you know? So that's a good opportunity for the buyer. Um, so you have to show this and, and explain it in a very good way that let's say, for example, you couldn't really get more sales because you didn't have enough inventory. So you didn't push a lot with PPC. So those things are good, uh, you know, indicators for buyers, whether it's a good deal or not. Number seven, niche. Some niches are more problematic than others, like supplements and toys. So, you know, it depends on the niche. Like, for example, fashion with high return rate, I guess, would get less multiple than, uh, you know, home and, uh, you know, uh, kitchen products. Um, so some, not, not all niches are equal. Number eight, age of business. The older the business, the more data that you can have to support that this, this is like a long-term business, the better and the higher multiple because it gives the buyers confident knowing that it's not just a trendy seasonal item COVID spike something that you know would fade or go away after a while you know it gives them confidence the confidence is very important for buyers uh, number nine owner involvement so you know if you are involved and you do everything a to z in your business that's not a good sign for the buyer uh, and that could decrease your multiple so the less involvement that the owner have the higher multiple that they can get why because to a buyer it's reflect and shows that you know they can take over this business easily and manage it themselves rather than you know maybe having or knowing that it's an owner kind of uh in involved business that you know it's a skill specifically for that owner that could only run it 
So that's, uh, you know, a, a very important point. Try to outsource, try to have SOPs, try to have everything that you can do that uh, will make it easily transferable asset to a new buyer. Number 10, seasonality. If you sell products that are very seasonal, that's something that will decrease your multiple. So, you know, you know, if, if it's already something that you sell, uh, you have, you know, try to maybe add some related items, variations or things that could help you make it more stable, you know, throughout the years. And when the season comes, it's just a high peak season. Number 11, bestseller rank. Um, bestseller rank is something that, you know, buyers love. Um, because it shows that you dominate the market and then it's very hard for other people to take over your position to your bestseller tag so that's something that definitely could increase your um uh your multiple and what i did to get the bestseller badge is i just launched a variation that it's break even i'm not making any money out of it just to create sales velocity and have a bestseller badge eventually it helped me also get more revenue more profits um, because, uh, you know, this variation went very well, well, number 12, operation procedures. I actually talked about it. SOPs. If you document the processes that you have in your business, that helps, uh, with immigration, obviously, you know, so you can talk with buyers and, um, you know, and, and explain them that. So that's an indicator that when they, and if they buy your business, it's going to be very easy for them to immigrate it. Um, and it's a big point helping them, uh, you know, getting, uh, helping you getting higher multiple. Okay. So who usually buys Amazon FBA businesses? So you probably hear about this, you know, a lot. We have a video about what is Amazon FBA aggregator. We're going to put the, uh, the card or a link to it. Uh, but it's mainly aggregators and aggregators are, uh, you know, businesses that were created. They, they got a lot of funds and uh, we're using these funds to buy a lot of Amazon FBA businesses and they kind of combine it with, you know, a, 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 a robust operational, uh, uh, you know, teams, uh, marketing teams and, uh, you know, advertising. All of these teams are kind of synced together to grow all these brands together. So uh, they buy businesses. They grow it because of they have good resources as far as money and teams and knowledge. And they, they, the plan is for them to grow them and eventually go public and make much higher multiples than what they bought it for. Uh, but the big ones, and this goes to uh, fentinternational.com. It's a website. I took this data from there. So credit for them. Uh, the biggest one, it's Terrasio. They have a uh, $3.4 billion funding and they, uh, you know, the size of the businesses they purchase and acquire now are more like the bigger ones, like 20, 30, 100 million uh, in sales. Uh, th then we have Perch, there is the around billion dollars, uh, Haiti around 800 million. And these numbers are not hundred uh, percent updated uh, because I know that, uh, you know, boosted commerce, for example, it says 137 uh, million. I know there is much more than that. So they always raise more. If you heard the news recently, the ratio laid off uh, employees, they uh, changed their CEO. That means that they are struggling. This business model is not, in my opinion, really the best. Um, it will evolve. The bigger ones will buy the smaller ones. They will have to do adjustments to make sure that they are, you know, profitable and they're in business. You know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, they're going to survive a lot of them, uh, but a lot of them will fail. Uh, but in short, this is, is the majority of, uh, you know, buyers, these aggregators, they have the money, they have the funds, they have the interest and the desire to buy small businesses like mine or yours, uh, or in even bigger ones like nine figures, eight figures, you know? So, um, yeah, that's it for this part. It's part one. I have so much information to cover. I want to make it short and, 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 and digestible for you. I don't want to make like a three hours video. So we're going to do it in parts. This is part one. Stay tuned for part two, where we're going to uh, talk about how you execute the plan that you got from the broker uh, and that you believe in. Uh, be hands on the process and some other things that will help you get uh, uh, to know what is the process, how it looks like and what I went through. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.